and welcome to the talk with Tariro. For the past uh, two weeks, we have been um, discussing the issue of uh, sexual exploitation and uh, abuse. And uh, this week, we are trying to wrap up uh, uh, that discussion, looking at uh, ways of uh, prevention and response to sexual exploitation and abuse. Um, and uh, on the program, helping us uh, in tackling that particular uh, discussion, we have uh, Pepisiwe Miranda. She is not new on the talk. She is uh, a gender and advocacy officer with uh, the Adult Rep Clinic. Pepisiwe, welcome to the talk. Thank you, Tari. Yes. What we want to initially find out from you is, um, yes, we know we have unpegged uh, sexual exploitation and, um, and abuse. Uh, we do understand the, the, the importance of uh, reporting once that happens uh, to, to an individual. But um, we would want also to find out what are the trends in Zimbabwe? when you're looking at uh, the issue of sexual exploitation and abuse. Because I know in the first segment, um, uh, in the first episode, uh, Florida spoke about uh, the issue of trafficking. And mm -hmm. it's something that we often think it's foreign. It doesn't really happen in Zimbabwe. But I remember she mentioned it as some form of exploitation that, uh, that is also happening in Zimbabwe. So what are the trends really? Yeah, uh, sexual exploitation and abuse is quite an, an issue in Zimbabwe. And as adult rape clinic, we have seen it as a form of uh, sexual abuse that is quite rampant and is increasing. Why increasing? Probably uh, just like uh, in a few um, past years or months, we have been experiencing, and we are still experiencing the COVID-19, mm -hmm. where people were supposed to be locked down so that we reduce the effects of transmitting uh, COVID-19. So. In such a scenario, people are in closed doors with the perpetrators and the one who calls the shows, the one who has the power, the one who brings the food on the table, tends maybe to abuse those who are vulnerable, those that are around him. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at children. Children, uh, when they go to school, they have that safety net whereby when they are at school, they are taken care of by the teachers and that safety net has since closed and people are in the locality. Mm. What are they doing? Yes. They're idle. So during that time, they can be found uh, to be exposed to those people who are so calculative. And um, one uh, sad thing about uh, exploitation and abuse, the survivor or the victim of such might not be even away that is happening because the perpetrators are so mindful. Mm. They will uh, do it in such a way that the child sees it as normal. And we have this society whereby uh, people in, in these societies will actually normalize any form of uh, sexual exploitation and abuse. So preventing it becomes a challenge. Mm. So we are here to talk about it and say how best can society be involved in a positive way mm -hmm. to curb such. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at um, it being prevalent, uh, but maybe before going into that, mm -hmm. I had asked you about the issue of uh, trafficking as well. Mm -hmm. Is it something that we would say we need to raise alarm bells or it's still quite limited in our country? Yeah, we, could, we mustn't wait until something uh, goes out of hand. Yes. We should be cognizant of the fact that any form of uh, sexual exploitation and abuse can happen. Mm -hmm. So looking at trafficking, it can happen, especially uh, these days when people are looking for jobs, they want greener pastures, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, unemployment and people would want to uh, adventures to, to be adventurous and go anyway. Mm -hmm. So out there, there are people who are also mindful of that and they can take advantage of unsuspecting uh, people who need jobs desperately. Mm -hmm. So I would say people uh, mustn't be that desperate yeah. such that they can accept anything. Mm -hmm. Some of these offers are too good to be to true. Be true. So people should be very careful, even as parents, when someone, when your child says they've got this scholarship, they've got this, they should do all the ground checks that are uh, necessary before allowing someone to go. Mm -hmm. 
um, looking at uh, the interventions, the, the kind of work that has been done in order to address uh, the challenges of uh, sexual exploitation and abuse, could you unpack that for us? Uh, as an organization, um, we have responded to this by offering a clinic at Paririnya Twa Ward C9, whereby we give uh, services free of charge to those who have been uh, victims of uh, sexual exploitation and abuse for free. Mm -hmm. And these services are given to everyone, uh, irrespective of uh, age and gender. Mm -hmm. Everyone can access those uh, services. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are not only looking at uh, offering the post-rape care. We also look at what are the causes, what are the effects, mm -hmm. and how can they be addressed. So we offer a holistic approach towards assisting a survivor, mm -hmm. a victim, until they graduate into a survivor. Mm -hmm. So when a survivor comes from the community, after they have been... Um, exploited or sexually abused, they are heavy at heart. Mm. They are experiencing the physical effects of rape mm. that are treated or that can be taken care of through uh, medical means. Mm -hmm. So if we define health, it doesn't only mean the absence of disease, illness or sickness, mm. but it uh, goes on to address issues of complete wellness of a being mm -hmm. that includes spiritually, emotionally, mm -hmm. and psychosocially. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to be healthy in all those aspects such that we can say someone is healthy. So at ARC, we look at that. Once the survivor comes in, mm -hmm. we give them the psychotherapy, the counseling, mm -hmm. the medical um, treatment, and make sure that it is holistic. Mm -hmm. And we also respect privacy and confidentiality mm -hmm. when we offer this service. Remember, uh, sexual issues are not easy yeah. to disclose or to share to anyone. Even if you know that I'm going to benefit from the services, but it's not easy. But we do that job so that our survivor or our victim graduates and they get the necessary services so that they can live a normal life even after a said experience has happened to them. Our discussion continues uh, after the break. We're on the show today. We are looking at uh, prevention and response to sexual exploitation and abuse. Join us. <laughs> Welcome back. Our discussion on the program today continues and uh, our focus uh, is uh, prevention and response to sexual exploitation and abuse. This is a discussion that we have been focusing on uh, over the uh, past uh, two weeks and uh, this week we are wrapping up uh, the discussion. And um, uh, before we went for the break, Pepe Sue was um, sharing with us the different services that um, are at our disposal in the event that uh, we have faced um, uh, exploitation and abuse in the event that we know somebody who is actually facing um, a sexual exploitation and abuse. Uh, definitely we can see that there are places that we can go to to get uh, the assistance that we need. When we are looking at um, uh, other stakeholders that can actually uh, complement the work that you are doing. What would you say are the recommendations that you would give to communities uh, as well as the uh, institutions? And here I'm looking at um, uh, churches, I'm looking at even traditional leadership and their uh, arms within the community, the schools, when uh, looking at uh, the fight against sexual exploitation and abuse. I would say things like uh, sexual abuse, when people look at... Uh, such forms of abuse in their individual uh, being, they'll see it as if it happens elsewhere mm -hmm. to someone else and the fingers always point to someone and they would think that it will never come closer home. Mm -hmm. So what we want to say to the communities that Hakuna mtu nusna nyoka. There is no institution, there is no country, family, or place that is immune to 
uh, sexual exploitation and abuse. It is there in our families. At times it can go unnoticed because the perpetrators have achieved to keep it uh, swept under the carpet and the survivor has not reported. Maybe because they don't even see that or they don't even realize that uh, something wrong has been done to them. They are not aware of their sexual and reproductive health rights. They think it's normal. So in the communities would appreciate a homegrown uh, solution or approach to prevention. Prevention is always better than cure. Mm -hmm. When we prevent this, we, we can prevent from these uh, forms of uh, abuse happening in our communities, whereby every stakeholder, every, everyone in the community takes that role to prevent. If we have a community whereby the community leaders, the gatekeepers, the traditional leaders, the churches, everyone is cognizant of this kind of sexual exploitation and abuse, mm. then we can fight it as a team mm. rather than pointing. Usually in communities, mm. people will blame, the parents will blame the children. Mm -hmm. They'll say, ah, vanae maswanu vangwarisa. Vanae maswanu wa shaterere. So we forget that as citizens or as adults and responsible citizens of Zimbabwe, we are also to blame because these children, they were born into a society that shapes them to what they would be. So it's up to the society, to the leaders in every sphere to be able to shape the future or to shape behavior of these children mm -hmm. as they grow. Is the environment conducive to bring out a person who is not uh, a perpetrator or who will not uh, disrespect another gender group? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about um, uh, prevention, how do we prevent uh, sexual exploitation and abuse within a community? Uh, when we prevent, this should be um, an issue where everyone is involved, like I said. As organizations, when we get into communities, mm -hmm. we should not like uh, force whatever we want to bring yeah. in terms of development, mm -hmm. but it should come from the uh, society, from the community. Mm -hmm. The community should see the ills in that society and they should feel the effects of that um, Ill, Ill, Ill behavior or that kind of abuse that has been maybe ab normalized by the society. Yes. You know how people talk about uh, uh, sex issues, they joke about them. Mm -hmm. You see in the, in the WhatsApp groups everywhere, people just talk, mm -hmm. they, they do careless talk yeah. about... With normalized abuse. Yes, with mm -hmm. normalized abuse. And when someone has been abused, they'll then blame themselves that they are to blame mm -hmm. since society has it that exactly. the uh, survivor is the one to blame mm -hmm. the woman is the one to blame mm -hmm. how were they dressed how were they carrying themselves mm -hmm. along yes. so we should be in a position to look at the cause and identify the problem mm -hmm. and when we, we we try to prevent we are not looking at the problem at the, at the people because at times we personalize these issues yet we need to look at the problem and agree as a community that rape and sexual abuse mm -hmm. is our problem yes. then when we strategize to uh, fight it we are coming from the same position and we want to make something which will be effective and user friendly mm -hmm. so what happens when the abuser is um maybe the custodian within that community, within the church, um, what happens? We would say, I often hear when we go to these uh, communities and talk to leaders, they would say in our churches, we have groups, mm -hmm. we have a, a boys fellowship, we have couples department, we have Sunday school, where these platforms can be used to give information that is accurate mm -hmm. without hiding other things and say this, this is not child stuff. Mm -hmm. We forget that these children know 
even more than we think they, they do. Mm -hmm. So it will be better to use those platforms to share information mm -hmm. that is relevant to them and using uh, age appropriate language. Mm -hmm. We know what language to use to a three year old, to someone at primary school, secondary school or tertiary. So once each individual gets the information from the start, they will be able to see when sexual exploitation and abuse comes and they will be ready to uh, react in a way that would prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. The discussion continues after this short break. Stay tuned. <laughs> We continue with uh, our discussion and uh, the focus today is um, a prevention and response to sexual exploitation and abuse. Um, there is always an argument that um, has been raised and continues to be raised about uh, the clash that exists between rights and responsibilities for young people. You know where young people have got their own rights and us as parents we say uh -uh, your rights have gotten a, a limitation and uh, the key question that we have is that uh, does the focus on rights of children uh, then in the end create an environment where children forgo their responsibilities right uh, when you talk about um, sexual um, health and reproductive rights of children we should be mindful that uh, children they have their right to enjoy childhood and never to endure it or those in power, those in authority to abuse because they are vulnerable. I was thinking of a situation whereby um, when sexual exploitation and abuse happens to a child, it's very difficult for them to report mm -hmm. because they are surrounded by adults who determine what they should do, yeah. what they decide. Even if they are hurt, they are silenced. So in that case, uh, I would say children's rights are also human rights. Mm. We should not uh, look down upon children and decide everything for them. Yes, we need to teach them. Mm. We need to guide them what they should do. And they should know their rights, rights to education, to food, to shelter, they should not be neglected. At times, uh, children know that the resources are there, mm -hmm. the food is there, the clothing is there, but someone just chooses to deprive them. And furthermore, they can choose to exploit them or use them to uh, their satisfaction in terms of uh, sex when the child is not informed and they don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. A child cannot be asked to consent for sex because they, they are children. They don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. So usually people would threaten children or persuade them mm -hmm. into agreeing to have um, sexual uh, activity mm -hmm. with them. Then when we see that um, when the children is when the children are exposed to such they cannot report on their own mm -hmm. so it takes an adult or a, 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 a guardian whoever is there but at times those people who are supposed to be protecting the children are the ones who are abusing them mm -hmm. so the issue of rights here seems to be now silent they are silenced mm -hmm. they might know their rights but they have no power to voice it. Mm -hmm. So it uh, takes up a society that is well informed. Even the parents and guardians should know that it's not proper to do whatever they want, mm -hmm. especially when we look at um, issues of sexual exploitation and abuse. Mm -hmm. Children need to be protected mm -hmm. and everyone else around children should take it as their responsibility to report any of such issues 
and make sure that the, the children receive the necessary services, especially the health services. Um, but still looking at uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, these rights um, and, and, and children, don't you think also there are instances where maybe the fact that as a young person I'm saying I've got a right to this, I've got a right to this, sometimes I might not want to listen to what um, my senior or my mother, my father is mm. saying uh, because I've got these rights that are attached to me. Yesterday it reminds me of a certain community which was saying you are talking about children's rights. Do you even know, this was an, an elderly woman, she was saying, do you even know that your children are abusing, uh, are abusing us? They are taking advantage of their rights. And we said, what do you mean? Yeah. And she went on to say, like a teenager, they can go, 13-year-old uh, goes to the township, they drink beer, they use all those um, uh, substances. They are drunk. They come back home. They knock at uh, 1 a.m. Mm. And they say, open mom. Mm. And mother says, where are you coming from? Mm. When she says, stay there a bit while I try to get the keys and unlock the door, the child will, always, will be now saying, I'm going to report you to the police that you locked me out. Mm. You see. And... <laughs> So I, I think we should see where the line should be drawn. Mm -hmm. The children should be given the information, like I said before, if they are given the information at from a tender age, yeah. they will know the information and they will know uh, the repercussions of that behavior, which they think they are enjoying their rights. Mm -hmm. When we say child's rights, we don't mean that they should do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. that will harm them yeah later so, um is there an instance um a where children can consent to sex no mm -hmm. children children cannot consent to sex mm -hmm. these people who have more power maybe they are older they have more advantages over the child they are the ones who would say she agreed mm -hmm. yet they are not even capacitated enough to make a decision of a sexual nature or to agree to sexual uh, activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say is your key message to Zimbabweans? Um, what we would want to see is um, a country which is free from sexual gender-based violence. What is your key message? At ARC, we envisage a, a society whereby sexual abuse is not there. A society which is free from all forms of sexual abuse. It starts with me. It starts with you. As a community, we can make it. As a country, we can make it. If we are ready to change those negative uh, attitudes and behavior that perpetuate sexual violence and be able to report Services are there in our communities and we should embrace them and use them. Use those local service providers. Let's use those uh, government ministries that are in our societies that help people to get the services. That will make a society to be a better place and the environment should be conducive for everyone. Indeed, that is a, a powerful uh, call to action there. It begins with you, it begins with me. What we need is to have a, a community, a society, a country that is uh, free from sexual gender-based violence. What we are saying is, you and I, we have a role to play to ensure that there is a complete elimination. Until next week, it's goodbye.